Kendrick has dropped more music in the last week than he has in the last four years. Oh, all these Kendrick fans are all lyricists. They'll be like, I'm smarter than you. Kendrick fans think they are just better than everybody. Drake has gone toe-to-toe with some of the biggest rappers ever. Yeah. Meek Mill, Pusha T, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick's never addressed anything that Drake has said to him. It's not a world tour, it's your girl's tour. Kendrick's an industry plant. BBL Drizzy is kind of fire, though. I ain't even gonna front. Drake needs to go make a fucking song on it. That would be crazy. Kendrick Lamar will be dropping an album. Which was Antonio Brown's plus one, I believe. Nikki Glazer was up there dicing everyone. 100% times hurt right now. They compared Dana White to Michael Vick, but instead of dogs, he uses humans. <laughs> Dude, there was some ruthless, ruthless ones, bro. Welcome to The Real O Show. I'm Zachary. And I'm Joshua. And we're brothers chasing the curiosities of our life. And on this show, we'll deep dive the most influential people, music, and topics going on in the world. And today, we're talking Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef, and we round it out with a Tom Brady roast. Well, welcome to the show. If you are tuning in, you are definitely interested in listening to two white guys debate culture at this point. Drake versus Kendrick Lamar, the biggest rap beef ever. And I didn't do any digging, but it is definitely the biggest ever because they stream more than anybody ever. With social media today, there's been no point in the last like, you know, couple, probably 30 years where like millions and millions of people can like instantly judge you for something. Like there's always been like newspaper or radio, like in the last like hundred years or whatever, right? But there's never been a time where you can like instantly post a song and there's just like that. A million people are like, ooh, this, this line from this part, this and this. So it's like it's it's a different realm that we're living in. But yeah, this is by far the greatest beef. It's actually been exhausting. This yeah, beef I'm, kinda, exhausting. I'm almost over it well, at this point. They posted more songs than any rap beef in history for sure yeah like like straight up dissing each other where like i guess drake hasn't just said kendrick and maybe that's where he's like kind of he's got to diss 20 different fucking people i know but i i think that's where like the real kendrick the real hip-hop heads the real people that like determine what culture is and what who is for the culture more I think that they're going to be like, well, Drake didn't address Kendrick fully, just Kendrick, where Kendrick just addressed Drake. And again, it's 20 V1. So it's like it's hard for Drake not to. But I think that Drake had a lot of different plants out there, a lot of different schemes from the things that he's learned from the Pusha T beef that he's brought into this. Of course. And I actually think it's very disrespectful, the amount of people that have been like, oh, Kendrick played this way smarter than Drake, when I just disagree with that again. I think I think Kendrick did a very good job. Like the time that he dropped um uh Meet the Grams after Family Matters, yeah. that was like the that was a great chess move. Yes. What dissolved really quickly was the fact that a lot of the things in that were fake were fake and not true. And I think that's where we come to this rap beef. Yes, a lot of things that Kendrick said could have been a little bit valid, could not have been valid. Who knows? Because there's no receipts on any on yeah. either side. Let's be honest. On either side, there's very little receipts. But the people that just believe everything that Kendrick says dismiss everything this that Drake the, says. This is the problem. This is the problem with Kendrick fans. Is like when Kendrick says something, they're like, "Oh my god! Like this is everything. This is like it." it you know, we have people at work that it's like, "Oh man, go get your your pedo goat, your pedo goat, like whatever they're saying." And it's like, dude. Kendrick has dropped more music in the last week than he has in the last four years. That's the best part of this. Like, I would say that if you're a Kendrick fan, you should be thanking Drake that he brought your goat out of whatever he was in. Like, people will be like, oh, well, he was going to drop it then COVID. What the fuck you mean COVID, bro? You were sitting in your house for two years. Like, you should be dropping. Listen, somebody, again, I'm not a Kendrick hater. Like, I actually I actually think I am. No, I, I am. That's where you're wrong. I think that Kendrick is great. And, I, and again, I think there is part of me that thinks that Drake should acknowledge Kendrick a little bit more in the sense that Kendrick is a great. What would make Kendrick greater, and I think what would, would it be changing this whole debate, if Kendrick had dropped two albums in the last five years, there, there may be a little bit of a talk here where I'm like, holy fuck, I think that Kendrick got it. And I think that Kendrick's last uh, song that he dropped, um, uh, Not, Not Like, like Us, us 
that song it's catchy it's catchy i it's thought it was catchy. very good and, and again i can unlike a lot of people that have debated the kendrick drake with a lot of kendrick people can't even admit anything that drake's done good and i want to go to your point where you were like oh all these kendrick fans are all lyricists they'll be like i'm smarter than you i know more i'm i'm that more is such a kendrick than you. thing but i will say this the, all Kendrick fans are lyricists until Drake drops some bars and they'll be like, wait, wait, explain that to me. I don't get it. And it's like, okay, motherfucker. Like, come on. Kendrick fans think they are just better than everybody. It is. It, 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 and, and here's and the it's thing. Anno- and it's fucking annoying. And here's the thing. I want to say, again, I would never, I would never represent and be like, I stand up for a guy who was an actual pedophile, was actually banging underage girls or touching kids, whatever it is. I would never Stick up for them. I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm going to separate MJ from the person and the artist. I'm not going to do that. Okay? Drake would literally be in prison right now if he was diddling girls. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it's it's 100% the fact. Look at Bill Cosby, dog. He got caught. Like, everyone who does it gets caught. At Drake, some point. Drake has been, and this is, again, what a lot of people don't understand. Drake has been filmed since he was a child. All the way till now, and he's 37 years old. You don't think that they got some videos of him? Like, well, come on. Well, obviously, if you're ever on social media, you saw that he brought the 17-year-old on stage, kissed her, and then found out she was 17. He was like, oh, I can't go to jail. And that person, who is now 31 years old, mm-hmm. came out, is studying for their law final, and addressed the situation and said, Drake didn't even pick me out of the crowd. His entourage picked me out of the crowd. And she literally was like, it didn't was nothing then. And it was it's all for the stage. Now. It's off of the stage. And again, and she at, also addressed that a ton of artists. Too. Akon had a huge fucking scandal uh, listen, about it. Everyone, a lot of videos can be taken out of context. Like Drake in the locker room, everyone was like, "He's in a high school girl's locker room." No, it was like his goddaughter's, and it was college. And again, yeah. all these people that like all the younger people that everyone's like, "That's creepy." Like from the outside looking in, they're like, "That's creepy." have all come out and been like, nah, like no. he's he's not creepy at all. He's actually just helping us. And again, like a lot of the people were like actors, like his Euphoria cast. He was like mentoring and helping them. Yeah, he executive produced a very successful show that won a lot of awards and he was helping people. If you actually go back after the first season when they won a bunch of a bunch of awards, Drake walked around and their little like uh award, like they had their own little gathering after he had bags of money. And he was just handing it to the cast. It's like, it's like he's not a bad person. And again, I'm not taking it away. I'm not trying to say like Kendrick's a bad person. And again, if we all want to examine everyone's lives, have millions of people examine you, I bet you we could find some dirt about you, your mom, everyone around you. No one is perfect. No one's crystal clear. Everyone's hiding some shit in their closet. That's a fact. So when you want to bring it out in a beef, of course it's going to come out. But that doesn't make, that doesn't like, put a, a kink in Drake or Kendrick Shield. And I want to say that I don't think that this beef hurts either one of them long term. I actually think it elevates them. And we're going to look back five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, we're going to be like, oh, sorry. We're going to be like, yo, that Kendrick Drake beef was wild. It's definitely a what a time to be alive type thing. And I want to address some things because the fact that, Listen, I think they've dropped too many songs. I think it's like completely played it's out. It's got to be done. And it's got to be done. done. It's got to be done. And the one thing is, is like, you know, Kendrick fans are talking about, oh, you know, of course you get called a pedophile. You're going to say I'm not a pedophile. But the fact is, like what Joshua said, the people that have been involved in the situations, like Billie Eilish literally came out and was like, no, he is legit just helping us. Like people think that other people can't be a fans of people. Like when there's so many more creepy people out in the world that aren't being examined and put under a microscope. So I want to say that too. Kendrick's never addressed anything that Drake has said to him. That is true. I mean, th- listen, he's been split up with his wife. They sold their house. He's got a New York city apartment. He hasn't seen penthouse. his kid. He's got a New York penthouse. City penthouse. penthouse. Hasn't seen his kid in six months. I haven't seen anything of that being addressed. I agree. And listen, I think that those are things that are like, that's Kendrick. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think that Kendrick is a bad dad, nor do I think that Drake is a bad dad. No. And I think that all they these do people, it differently. They just do it differently. But I think that everyone can look from their ivory tower and be like, I'm the best fucking parent. If I had hundreds of millions of dollars, I would be parent. It's like, okay, buddy. Like, 
you wouldn't if you you're not under the same pressure they are. And again, I think that Kendrick, I think if anything, this is great for Kendrick. And I'm going to call my shot right now. Kendrick Lamar will be dropping an album. It's a PR stunt. Drake already PR. called it. It's like, a PR stunt. That's why Drake wins right there. Yeah. That's why Drake wins right there. If you noticed, Kendrick Lamar, he cut all the copyright on all of his yeah. videos online. And for the people that don't know what that means, that means that you can use all of his songs, all of everything that he dropped for free. There's no copyright, so you get paid off of it. In in short terms, that means that he's he wants you to be posting about yeah. it, using it because it's all rollout for his new album. Yeah, and and Drake addressed that that it's like he's like you're trying to get in the beef for the PR instead of actually putting in the work was was the bar he used in the last song, and he needs the fucking PR. Like, th- th- listen, I will. I'm not a Kendrick fan. I don't really listen to his music. I don't vibe with it. it it's just not my cup of tea. I will forever say Kendrick is one of the best rappers of all time. I would put him on my Mount Rushmore against my will, just out of the respect that so many people have of him, his streaming numbers, his effect on culture. He's great. But I'm telling you, he's great. I love but I'm Kendrick. telling you, he needed this beef with Drake to be more relevant. No, he did. I don't Listen, care what anybody says. This, I said, I don't think that it puts a chink in either one of their armors. Drake has gone toe to toe with some of the biggest rappers ever yeah. Meek Mill, Pusha T, Kendrick Lamar. You could even throw a couple other people in there as well. And and that's what I want to come at. I, I if people want to talk shit about Jersey Drake, I just wanna I just wanna make a list. I got I got a list of tracks that no rapper in the history of rapper, and because again, rappers are people be like Drake's just a singing, he's just a singing guy. He's better when he sings. Go make a melody type shit, right? And I think that's bullshit because Look at these tracks that he has. And again, I want to compare this to anybody that made a diss track about anybody, right? He has Drake. These are Drake's diss tracks in his Meek, Meek Beef, Pusha T Beef, and Kendrick Beef, all right? Charged Up, Back to Back, Summer 16, Two Birds, One Stone, Duppy Freestyle, Push Ups. This says 7 a.m. on Bridal Path. I don't know if that's a considered a diss song. I wouldn't openly. consider that I wouldn't a consider a diss song. But this is what this list had. And then Family Matters and The Heart Part 6. I, I'll say that I, I want to address one thing in this debate. Kendrick maybe has had more direct disses within the songs. But if you're actually looking at a music production and will the song be played in 10 years, Drake's songs are 100% better than Kendrick's. Yeah. From a song standpoint, like I'm going to listen to my headphones because I'm partying, because I'm fucking cleaning my house, I'm working. Those songs are going to be played a lot more than Kendrick's songs. I don't care what anybody says. I also want to say this because I think a lot of other Kendrick fans, and again, I'm not sitting here on my knees sucking Drake off because I really, really like Kendrick's music. I'm just saying this from a, a fan. Drake does everything better than everyone. Yes. And again, Kendrick fans get really mad. Oh, he's just he's a vulture, a culture vulture. He takes everyone else's thing and does it. He does it better than them. If Patrick Mahomes can run, throw, vision, brains, have everything, you would look at that and be like, that's the most desirable quarterback ever. But when an artist does it, they're like, oh, that guy just steals everyone's ideas. Perhaps. But the great steal, the good people borrow it. And again, Drake is the greatest. He's the greatest pop star, greatest artist. I would say greatest rapper, but I, I know that would really hurt the culture a lot to say that. I mean, he could be the best rapper if he wanted to make rap, but the problem is rap doesn't sell as much as the singing and the melodies and the pop. Yes, exactly. People will and be Kendrick like, couldn't why? Do that. Kendrick That's, couldn't do that. I'm sorry. Again. Can't. Drake's, Drake's, uh, Fuck, what is it called? Um, the the pop album that he dropped, the the more techno album. Oh, the n- never mind. Drake's honestly never mind. Couldn't think of that for a second. People will talk shit about Drake's honestly never mind. Kendrick's fan, Kendrick fans, they'll be like, yeah, he makes fucking techno albums. Listen, in ten years, we're all gonna look back at honestly never mind. We're gonna be like, holy shit. Drake was so ahead of his time, it wasn't yeah. funny. I think I I said that from the very beginning. That will be one of his best projects he's ever made. But Stream, streaming wise, you did mention something earlier about how the thing that none of Kendrick's songs would really play well in a club. The OV Ho song, the, the, not, the Not Like Us, 
that is his best song he made. Well, that's why I like that was so big. And he big. dropped that because he dropped a song that was completely false. I know, but that's why I like that was so big was because Metro killed the beat on it and it was hard, right? The BBL Drake song, I'm sorry, I, I love Drake to death. The BBL the, Drake the, the, song? The one that Metro did? It's hard as fuck, bro. The beat yeah. is so hard and it's weird. Drake was like, bro, you made a song about my ass, which was like weird. Like the BBL shit doesn't really like, it's not I, that yeah, funny. It, it's not that funny. And I have been thinking this whole time. Though. I've been thinking this whole time. Drake needs to make a song on it. BBL Drizzy is kind of fire though. Uh, but like I Drake needs to go make a fucking song on it. Yeah. Like that would be crazy. BBL Drizzy is kind of, kind of hot. I, I like that. It's kind of jokes. Obviously, we were talking earlier about Kendrick having a little PR stunt for his album. I still will forever believe. I don't care who disagrees, doesn't believe it. I think Drake's getting splits on Kendrick's music. Don't care what anybody says. I don't know. I I think that's tough to say because we don't know for sure, and there's no way for us to know for sure. Universal owns Kendrick's label. I agree. I love the conspiracy. Labels an industry plant. Kendrick's an industry plant. Drake's definitely getting some type of cuts, equity share with Universal, or he's the CEO. And that's where I'm sitting on it. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know who won. I think Kendrick, honestly, from someone who's not really a Kendrick fan, I think Kendrick surprised me in that aspect. But it's also because Kendrick doesn't drop music enough for to be like relevant in my head. Yeah, I mean I'm going to say this right now. I think that there was Drake was talking about his beef with Meek and, and he was like, "Oh, how did his how did his song how did his how did his diss song start?" And I thought about it, I'm like, "I don't know." And when I think about even all these tracks, out of all the tracks, there's not many lines that really like stuck out with me like it, it's all the like the lyricist stuff. It was like back to back was a hit. That was played everywhere. Locker rooms, clubs, like, bro, push-ups is a hit. It's not a world tour. It's your girl's tour. Listen, I that think- We said that to every kid, bro. We would be, like, in the hallways, be like, bro, this ain't a world tour. It's your girl's tour. Like, that was a thing. And again, I'm not in school anymore, so maybe the kids are saying some shit that I don't know. But to me, I think that Drake won by a narrow margin, and that narrow margin comes from one of Kendrick's songs is completely false. And it was the most lucrative song. The song that was, like... It really took the air out of everything, but it was a false narrative. And I think that we all have to understand that that does matter and that does play a part. 100% it matters. And I think push-ups is a fucking hit. Push-ups is the one thing that you could have that song. That song could be in a, that, that could be a hit. I also want to address that DJ Mustard made the last one, the last song, um, uh, Not Like Us. But then there was someone who was at a Mustard show in Vegas that day. And they literally said that Mustard played a ton of Drake songs. A ton of Drake songs. Of course. And then they said they didn't play Like Us until everyone was already out of the building. And then they started playing it. It's because they didn't want people to boo or be like, whatever. They probably oh, didn't yeah. want to create any emotion. Listen, Drake has played everywhere. You can play Drake at a family gathering of 50-year-olds. You can't play Kendrick. Listen, our family, our family wedding, best wedding music we've ever had and half the songs were drake and rod wave so. listen listen when in doubt you play drake for sure this is what it is so the tom brady roast just dropped yesterday and uh it was fucking hilarious i'll be honest with you i didn't see the whole thing it was a damn three-hour roast but i was watching a lot of the highlights a star-studded lineup that came through and i'm not even talking about like the the, the athletes that came right i'm talking about the pure Co- the comedians that came right and i know you didn't see this one because you said that you saw the kevin hart talk and again zachary thinks that they were all mean to tom yeah which no shit they're mean they're ruthless i just to didn't tom. like that they were attacking him about giselle but that's, that's the whole soft point. spot though. no that's the whole point literally dude n- dude nikki glazer i want you to watch this after nikki glazer and kill tony were the mvps of the, the it's not even close Nikki Glazer was up there dicing everyone. Is she the one dog. that was go- was he the one going down the line with all no, the comedians? No, Nikki is a girl. Oh, okay. she's a girl. And she she fucking diced everyone, and then she finished it off. She was like, "I didn't know much about Tom." She's like, starts like she starts like you know like oozing up Tom, and she's like, you know, he was a sixth round pick. I found you know everything he does, he does the greatest. 
and I bet Tom can't make me come tonight. And it was like, it's like ended it off. And I was like, no fucking way. It was wild. But she was like, she was like, man, she was like, it must be tough. Like, and then like before this, and like the same breath, she was like, man, it must be tough that, uh, and again, I'm sorry, Nikki, that I'm fucking up your, your stand up here. But she was like, basically like, um, man, it's kind of tough that, uh, you know, Giselle's coach could, Eat, beat your ass while eating her ass or something like that and it was like it that's was what just, kevin hart ruthless. said that i thought was bad because he's like he was talking the about the coach. Coach. He's, like, he's like you know yeah. you fuck your coach sometimes you got to do that to you know when he's like he's like i knew and he that's was what giselle was doing you know I like and was i was like oh man, that like that hurt my that's chest, how bro. that's okay that's how you can tell a good comedian from like the guys that just go up there and like have one-liners yeah. Because Kevin set that whole joke up. Yeah. Like he set that whole thing up to just be like, oh man, you Giselle got fucked up. And then he was like, he was too. he was like, man, this dude got divorced to go eight and nine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, fuck them kids. I just wanna say, I think it's I think this is why people like the roast of like really famous people, because it's like these relatable. people are at the they're it's relatable, but it's like you finally get this person who like Tom Brady is like untouchable. And then they kind of get knocked down a peg or two. And it's like, people can laugh at that. But honestly, I feel like Giselle was the biggest. Like, I bet yeah. you she was She was choked. there, wasn't she? I don't think she was there. I bro. thought she was actually there. She was Antonio Brown's plus one, I believe. No, no, no. That was a joke. I know. Zachary. I but know. That was but, that's, but that's ruthless, bro. No, that was hilarious. That was the, the kill yeah, no, G- Yeah, Giselle got kind of run over. I, bro, I... 100% Tom's hurt right now. Tom hasn't responded, like, hasn't, like, come out publicly being, like, that was a good shit, like, that was funny. Don't or, they like, go a up after, like, no, at no, the no, very he did, end? No, he and, like, did. He roasted people. He honestly, I thought Tom was a great sport. I thought Tom was a great sport. He took it really well. I, he must. He got paid a lot of money. He got that. paid a fuck ton of money. Yeah. And it's, like, Netflix. Dude, think of all the stars that that brought out. There was crazy amount. I mean, Tom Brady personally texted Kevin Hart to do that. They called Dana White. I don't know if you saw the joke about how they compared Dana White to Michael Vick, but instead of dogs, he uses humans. <laughs> I was fucking, dude, I was in tears, dude. It was, dude, there was some ruthless, ruthless ones, bro. <laughs> ruthless ones. There was, some guy was like telling Kim Kardashian she's got, she's got more beef than Kendrick and yeah, Kendrick yeah. and Drake. And I was they like, close oh her legs. Yeah, that was tough. That was, dude, ruthless. We need more of that. Did you hear what, uh, why her and OBJ broke up? No. I heard it, I heard it throughout the office today. No. She said they needed to have kids in like the next six months. She wants more kids? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know why? It's because Kanye wants more kids. Kanye's like, Kanye wants a farm of kids. Bro, he's a billionaire. You should. I, you should I'm not to. saying, I'm not saying that, but like he wants more kids. So, it's definitely given her the FOMO of like I need more kids, type shit. And they just like do it, do together? it together. I don't know. I, listen. I thought Kim had pregnancy issues. Like I thought they used a surrogate already. I'm like 99 percent sure they've already like used a surrogate on one of their. What's kids. a surrogate? It means that like they take sperm from like the and husband. Someone else carries and they that? carry the yeah they carry the baby. They pick the surrogate. They pay him a lot. Of but money. like, how do you? Doesn't it just come out as like a little bit of somebody else's kid though? Yeah, it's half someone else's kid. But what they do is like a lot of these rich families, like the Kardashians and Kanye, what they do is they find like a thoroughbred girl who's like perfect. Yeah. They pay her five hundred thousand dollars, and then they they like house her at their house. They monitor everything she does, what she puts in her body. She got they pay for their doctors, they pay for everything. They just treat her like a princess for that nine months, so she's good. And then they have the baby, and then if they want another one, they do it again. Interesting. Yeah, it's not like the husband fucks them. I mean, maybe they do. Some I mean, five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> five hundred thousand dollars. I better get the hit, you know. <laughs> but man, if you made it this far, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, chirp us in the comments, or praise us in the comments. Doesn't really matter either way. Until Friday show. Peace. No Kendrick fan made it this far. I guarantee it. Fuck all Kendrick fans. Peace. About to get all this dough, ain't no fuck niggas know I swear to God we the ghosts, this ain't the story they told Man, if you know, then you know I never had to tell my dogs that we don't run for breaks They pay for getters, they want money more than they want fake shit